Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. I'm just saying, we're there for a lawful purpose. We had all the probable cause in the world, and the ultimate investigation proved we were right. They had hand grenades, they had machine guns converted weapons, no registration, no occupation, uh, occupational tax stamp. Um, they were breaking the law far and wide. So okay. that, that just, I just want to be clear on that. No, I think I understand that. And I, you know, I mean, it's just like what happened recently in D.C. I don't think that people should so easily go out there and start attacking uh attacking other people for that matter much less uh government officials or uh law enforcement or anything like that but however however i have to say there's a couple of things here and i see people mentioning this one if if you're saying that there's no reason why people should attack uh a government agent an atf agent that's coming to serve a warrant or whatever it is then what is the reason that they that they would attack or kill people Self-defense. Okay, so so do the people have that same right of self-defense? Uh, not in the face of lawful government authority. All he had to do was, all, all David Crash had to do was put his hands up and say, go ahead and search the place. We got nothing to hide. Okay, so the women and children that have been killed by the ATF, right, or people's dogs... Etc. Okay, back up. What women and children were killed by the ATF? Okay. Um, so, for example, I'm just going to give you an example. Armament and Axis says, and the ATF had no right to shoot a woman holding a baby at Ruby Ridge. That was FBI. Okay. Um, CB says can kill a kid, yeah, though. That was Lon Horiuchi from the FBI. Mm -hmm. They took over the scene, and mm -hmm. they made the judgment to shoot her as a combatant or a aggressor or whatever. And, um, and in, in your mind, was that okay? Probably not. Mm -hmm. there were, okay. there, there, Appalachian Gunrunner says Vicki Weaver. I'm sh that's the same person, I think, that we're talking right. about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, a lot of times these situations, and I could tell you, there's been situations when police officers or law enforcement behind a badge do illegal things. So, if, so for example, there's stories, and I can't remember the exact name right now, but there's a story, I remember this in New York, of a guy, of a young kid, young black kid, that actually worked for police officers in New York selling drugs for them. So, in other words, in New York, the police officers would seize drugs take those drugs and put them back on the streets and have these kids selling such, drugs for them. That is such a minute uh, percentage of law enforcement. And I've worked I'm, all over the country. I'm not, saying it's all, I'm not saying it's all law enforcement, but the point I'm getting to is when they were, there was other law enforcement that started investigating that case, and those police officers decided that they had to eliminate this kid who was becoming a witness... And they went after him, and when they went after him, uh, a lot. I think I don't think any of them died, but they all got shot. And then for weeks, if not months, in New York City, they were trying to find this guy. And every time they would come up on him, he actually wound up being pretty badass. He kept uh, shooting up these guys. And when he was eventually arrested, he was cleared of all those charges in court, except for having a gun illegally, because he was defending himself against these police officers that wanted to assassinate him. So that's well, why I'm saying, like, sometimes you're in a situation... So I understand mm -hmm. this guy who had the gun to protect himself against police officers who he was selling dope for the cops. Yes. And then the cops okay. decided you know to kill what? him. No, you know what? That goes all the way down the toilet. Next subject. Mm -hmm. You sleep with dogs, you're going to get fleas. The mm -hmm. dirty cops should go to prison. He should go to prison. You don't get to saddle up and do a bunch of heinous illegal drug dealing with cops for cops and, and expect that the cops don't go to jail and you go to jail or get shot or whatever occurs 
Mm-hmm. If you're out committing crimes, you're out there committing crimes. Let's don't try to candy coat that. Regardless of who you are, regardless of what side of the law you're on, what I'm saying Correct. to you, what if you're the so if you're the person on the opposite side of the law when they're doing something wrong and they're coming after you and maybe they want to kill you, don't you have the you? I mean, you can't just go okay, I surrender and then they kill you and then plant a gun on you or whatever. I'm not saying that's every situation here. No, that's, you know. like I said, that's such a minute mm-hmm. portion of law enforcement and civilian interaction. Mm-hmm. Let's face it, our cops are good, our feds are good, they're out there trying to keep people alive, protect the public, do some uh, ne'er-do-wells come in, end up in there, a bad judgment, um corrupt, uh, low morals, uh, no ethical standards. Absolutely. But in 27 years, total of 36 years in law enforcement, 27 with ATF, I probably met or run into or come across eight, 10 real dirty cops that, Mm -hmm. you know, deserve detention and, and what happened to those guys? Did, did, did they eventually meet justice? Some. Okay. Yeah. I mean, definitely, so I'm not saying that it rises to the same level of a crime, but definitely what happened with Mike Deddy and what happened with guns going across the border illegally into Mexico, that the ATF, if, so let's say a regular person was out there taking uh, guns and send them, sending them across the border you guys would you would say, hey, we need to go after those people, right? Real, those guys need to be Correct. under the prison. But in that case, the folks at the ATF that allowed that, and the people in the government that allowed that, there's not they one person that removed. I know of that paid any kind of price for that. They should have been removed. They should have been terminated, and potentially prosecuted, mm-hmm. leveraging an FFL like Mike to do presumably illegal acts for the greater good is not the way we do business. Mm -hmm. It never has been. It was uh, some neophyte supervisors, some unskilled agents. They saw the big kahuna at the end of the rainbow and said, oh, we got a a big deal here and we got this guy who's willing to help us. And it was ill-advised from the get-go. That would have never happened in my day. Mm-hmm. My first line supervisor would have shut that down and said, "This is ridiculous. Stop." Mm-hmm. If I could interject, you know, uh, a lot of the problems here in Arizona started with our special agent in charge, Bill Newell. Bill and, Newell's uh, a tool. Of, <laughs> yes, he is. And that uh, rhymes. He, he, he orchestrated uh, wide receiver as well as fast and furious. Now, Vince and I share a a mutual acquaintance, and I had dinner with him one night and asked him, I said, how is it nothing happened to him? He said, well, you know, the guy didn't have anything to fear because he was taking orders from above him with the assurance that if anything ever happened, nothing bad would happen to him. And you have to look at it. You say this guy wasn't removed. He wasn't... uh, I think they did change in office, but they moved him back to his home state and paid him to not go to work. And I think he's probably retired by now. He got a full pension. Never even got a letter of censure for what he did. He went in front of Congress and absolutely lied through his teeth. Um, They said, well, what about these walking guns? And he said, well, according to my definition, uh, we never walked any guns. But he didn't give his definition of what walking guns was. Mm-hmm. Um, Bill Newell, Bill Newell, if they would have given him qualified immunity and put some pressure on him, it would have gone right up the chain of command. That thing, Bill Newell couldn't find a convict in the penitentiary. Bill Newell was acting on direction from the Department of Justice. They were trying to lay a baseline. What happened as soon as Fast and Furious hit? Oh, we're going to ban all multiple sales of rifles along the border for two months or however long they did that. Um, That was a whole, whole, I believe, 
Um, from the beginning, he was just a puppet and a coward. And yeah, he suffered no consequences. They sent him back to Utah as a uh, organized crime coordinator or something. Grade 14 with two years salary retention, which gave him his I-3, retired out. And nothing happened. That was a reward as far as I'm concerned. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.